Hi, I'm John Cash. Welcome to John Cash Ministries and Revelations Church's Daily Devotion. Today, the title of my mini-sermon is Taking Unspeakable Evil and Turning It Into Good. We're in John chapter 13. We're going to look at verses 30 through 34. The Bible says in verse 30, As soon as Judas had taken the bread, he went out, and it was night. Well, what we see here is Judas walking away from Jesus, walking away from the disciples, and he went out from them. It was nighttime, and he planned on betraying his Lord. This is one of the most heartbreaking parts of all of Scripture, to see one of his disciples hate him so much to just betray him to sinful man, to the Roman army, to the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And in one of the most amazing comments you'll ever see about unspeakable evil, Jesus then says this in verse 31. When he was gone, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. Huh? What? You think maybe Jesus was a little mad. You think maybe that Jesus would start preaching about evil, about Judas, more about what Judas... No. Jesus looks at this unspeakable evil, and here's what he sees. Opportunity. He looks at this unspeakable evil, and he says, now the Son of Man is going to be glorified, and God is going to be glorified. In other words, something good was going to happen from something as evil as what was about ready to happen. God was planning on taking the betrayal of Jesus when he was rested, when he'd go to the cross, when he'd die for our sins. Jesus, this was the beginning of the road that took him to Calvary. God was going to take this unspeakable evil and eventually, with the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, he was going to turn it into good, the good news. Understand, the best laid plans of Satan, God, in his power, in his love, in his providence, will turn upside down and turn it into good. That's why scripture tells us that for the believer, all things will work together for good. And that is what he's saying here. So whatever Satan is doing to try to get you, understand that in God's power and providence, he can turn it into good. He will be glorified through it. You'll be strengthened in your walk if you stick with him, and others can get saved if you stick with him. Then he says in verse 32, If God is glorified in him, God will glorify the Son in himself, and I will glorify him at once. In other words, this is a good thing because the whole world will have the opportunity to go to heaven. Verse 33, he then says this, My children, I will be with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and just as I told the Jews, so I'm telling you now, where I'm going, you cannot come. Jesus immediately reminds them that he is leaving them. They don't understand what's going on with Judas. They don't see the big picture. He does. But he reminds them that he is leaving. They don't understand this means his death, but he's leaving. Now, he had to leave. He had to leave the earth. <clears throat> he had to go up to heaven, sit at the Father's right hand for a reason. Because it was at that point that the Holy Spirit would be released upon the earth. And these disciples needed the Holy Spirit to guide them and empower them. Remember the day of Pentecost. So this was all in the plan of Jesus Christ. And then he says in verse 34, A new command I give you, love one another. Now just stop. Just one thing. That's not a new command. You go back into the Old Testament, it's there. You can see God wanting people's love and devotion. So why does he call this a new command? Let me just say that the disciples didn't get it. The disciples did not tr truly understand what godly love was all about. They were tainted by the world and by the culture, just as we are here in America today. 
And so what he's trying to say here is, let me show you and explain to you what real love is. You just watch my example. He says, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. Well, what was he about ready to do? He was about ready to die for them. He was about ready to do the most unselfish thing he could possibly do. He was focused on them and on himself. So he's saying, follow my example. This is what real true love is, to lay down your life for someone else, to put someone else before yourself. And these are the marching orders for every born-again believer listening to this video. God bless you. Thank you for your support of John Cash Ministries and Revelations Church.